Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C. here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. It's that time of the year again where, well, Santa's coming to town. So you guys better be, uh, well, I guess you could be a little naughty, but better start being nice. Anyways, this is the ESP LTD M17 wanted, unwanted 7-string guitar. The reason why I say unwanted is because it's a 7-string guitar. Not really... Too many people are crazy about a seven string. Plus, the way that I finish this guitar, it's not going to appeal to everybody as is. Didn't do any major mods to it. It's mostly cosmetic. I did replace the pots with CTS pots, but everything else that's on this guitar is bone stock, other than the finish. So as you can see here, the finish is pretty much done. There's nothing more I can do to it. It's been sanded polished and everything else the top on this is a fabric top that you can get like michael's or anything else you know someplace like that i've been looking at some different types of fabrics to put on some guitars this one kind of like appealed to me a little bit for the seven string for some reason i don't know why it just did so when i picked it up checked it out i had to do a little ironing on it yeah i know how to iron there's some uh, wrinkles in it, and there was some folds in the cloth itself, so I had to kind of flatten that out a little bit before I applied it to the body of the guitar. So, typical fabric applying with epoxy resin. Pour a little epoxy resin out, roll it out, put your cloth down, stretch it out, and then pour a little bit of epoxy on top of there and squeegee it around, getting rid of all the air bubbles and little pockets and stuff like that that it creates when it's two surfaces that are kind of wet will hit each other you get bubbles so you got to make sure you squeeze all that out otherwise it shows up when it's completely finished but on this one here i kind of did a little bit of a different thing mixing pigments with the epoxy resins now i've got a whole kit over here of all different color pearls that you can mix with epoxy resin so i mixed a little bit of white pearl with this epoxy now i didn't know that what color i was going to paint the body uh or even if i was going to paint the body maybe stain it i don't know or dye it i don't know same with the headstock i had no idea what i was going to do but this kind of worked out using the pearl in with the epoxy so when i did the pour uh on top of the cloth before I put the actual finish epoxy on top of that I mixed a little bit of pearl white in there and in doing so it ended up like the hats are black but now the hats have a little bit of a flake in them kind of like a metallic to them because of the pearl uh, it matches the rest of the body now I painted the body with the black diamond metallic and just not even thinking that wow this all kind of ties together now the sides and the back and the headstock are done with the 2k clear uh which is wonderful stuff i can't say anything more good about it the headstock on this thing really came out nice i changed the logo from the uh i don't know if it said ltd on there right change it to esp using chrome thank you very much uh jeff lee over at diamond cup graphics came through once again for this guitar and the super chicken which is the phoenix that i'm working on to match the mustang mach 1 made my decals for me thank you very much the body on this thing what i ended up doing is after I did the first uh, epoxy resin on this thing and let it cure it up before I put the final epoxy on here, is I end up drilling some holes the same diameter as a 45 caliber shell. Now, these are spent shells, so they're not actual bullets that are put into the body of this thing. I cut the two part off of it, just leaving me the back that shows the caliber size of the bullet and epoxy resin that was into the body along with a couple of knobs that match those kind of tied everything together a little bit i could have went with a three-way switch uh cap that would look like another bullet but it looked more like a telecaster three-way switch than anything else and i really didn't want to go so i just left the black one on there the one thing that I love about this paint, especially the metallics and the pearls, 
uh, and the candies, they spray evenly. They spray nice. They lay out. They don't look doesn't look blotchy. It doesn't have this, this weird effect to it or nothing when you look at it in the light. So right here is a picture of the back of the body with the flash from the camera on it, and you can see that it's not a blotchy finish on the back. It's pretty much even. I love this stuff. This black diamond. I've used it on a few different uh, bodies and a couple other projects that I've uh, been working on. And it just sprays out really nice, fantastic shit. Along with the 2K Clear, uh, I do want to see if I could find if they make a Pearl Clear uh, in different color pearls, because uh, that's going to help me on my next project that I'm going to end up working on. But all in all, this guitar finished out really nice, went together, no problems whatsoever. It's got a, a solid... Uh, neck on there. I can't complain about it. I can't complain about it whatsoever. I really liked how this thing laid out. I've played it a little bit. It's not bad um, for me having, you know, kind of wide fingers. The wider fretboard seems to be a little bit better, but having that extra string throws me off a little bit as I'm playing because usually I'm, you know, chugging away on that low E string while there's one above that now the B string and I'm kind of hitting at it, you know, instead of hitting the E. But anyways, this up on eBay now. I was thinking about using this guitar as a um, Secret Santa this year, but it already got a bid on it, so I have to sell it now. I don't want to pull it down and piss anybody off on eBay, and then I'll drop my feedback down to crap, and I really don't want to do that. So here are a few, um, I don't know, two of them are the feedback from the last two guitars that I sold on eBay. One of them is an email that I ended up receiving from the person who bought the Schechter guitar, with the one with the flames on there. And, yeah, so let's get into something else after that. So here is the next victim on my counter. This is a Devlin. Kind of a nice guitar. It's got a print on there. It's supposed to mimic, like, some type of flame or true flame or something, which it does in a way, but... The angle of it just doesn't seem right. I mean, either it's going to go this way, this way, or this way. I can't see it going that way, though. That's just weird. I looked this guitar body up online, and it seems like that's kind of how they did the print. They went this way with it. But anyways, this is going to be the next uh, restoration job. There's some heavy scratching in this thing. There is some couple chips here and there. And one right there i got to fix. Um, buckle rash right here pretty deep. And the neck's in good shape. The neck's in really, really good shape. It does have a little bit of a dent in the neck right there, but that'll be taken care of when I put the paint on it and clear it. Set neck, no cracking or anything anywhere. Frets seem to be in very good shape as far as what they look like. Um, as far you know, basically just no wear wearing on the frets, but there is some sharp ends on it, mostly down here always down here. Every guitar that I've ever found or, or worked on, there's always in this area uh, sharp frets. Even on removable, bolted on, whatever you want to call them next, uh, there's always sharp front ends down here. It's like, well, you got the neck off the guitar. Fix it. This here I can understand, being a set neck that it's a little harder to get in there with the file, but it can be done. I don't know why they just refuse to do so. But the frets are in good shape. There's one fret on here that's a little bit, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right here, there's like a, like a little nick in the fret, which would come out doing a fret leveling on there if need to be. And I'll take care of that as well, and then polish up these frets. Now, the one thing that my father has taught me years ago is never use your thumb for feeling things out. He says because your thumb has its own pulse to it, and it's not going to give you a correct reading as far as feeling some. So if you have something that's really minor, use your fingertips. Your fingertips will tell you what's going on. So in case of this, the fret work that's or the frets that are on here, if visually they look fine, but if there's a little bit of wear going on, you're not really going to see it. But if you rub your finger over it, you'll feel it. And these guys feel pretty good, exception of the one, this one I think it was. 
this one over here it's got a little bit of a like a not a nick but just something there and I want to get rid of that form and then polish out the fretboard oil the fretboard but I want to do that work before I get into this work here <clears throat> and the reason why is because fret work causes little metal shavings uh, metal dust and when you have a nice finished body and a headstock and you're doing fret work and you get that shit all over well now you're gonna kind of risk scratching your clear coat scratching your finish you're gonna have to protect the body make sure that there, none of this shit gets anywhere on there if you sand down the body because it's a, a dirty metal dust it gets in the body and leaves stains in the wood and that you also can't really get out very well either so that's why i'm gonna get the front work done on this thing first he's sending me the floyd rose he bought a shallower floyd rose for this brand new and he's already mocked it up for the locking nut so what i want to do is i want to dry fit the shallower in the space that he already pre-cut uh, I am going to clean up the cuts though to make them look a little bit more like it was stocked and uh, you know somebody adding on something. So what I want to do is make sure the sleeves fit inside of here. Uh, they got to be snug, but not you know too snug to where I can't pull them out or whatever. Uh, I want to get the sleeves inside of here. Put the screws inside there. Put the shallower inside there, and then push it as far as I can push it. Put some strings on here with the locking nut and just get the two outside E strings to line up correctly going down the neck. So I'm worried about is this area here if the string is, you know, if I got to move this over a little bit, then I got to move it over a little bit. But I'd rather get the mock up done and completed before I do any of the painting or stripping or painting because that's going to make it very difficult to correct, fix, or whatever after it's painted. But all in all, this is a pretty nice, pretty nice guitar. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about too is the claw and the springs back here because there's not a lot of meat. I mean, right here, there's enough meat right here. When it gets over here, not a lot of meat. It's very, very thin, and then it's solid over here too. Pickups over here. So that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. And I don't want to go through and uh, carve that out. Now I have, which is the same templates that he's got as well. I have templates for doing, putting in Floyd Roses. These are MDF. I don't care for these very much, but they're a good reference. What I do like is the plexiglass ones. So these are Stumax templates. This is for your cutout for the back in case I'm gonna need it for anything. And then this, even though it doesn't look like it's a template for a bridge or a Floyd Rose, it is. So if you put this on here, that gives you your main cutout for the bridge and block. And this gives you your cutout for the ass end of it where your fine tuners are. So I'm gonna use this template here to straighten up a lot of these lines and make it work out for them. He didn't do a bad job on this at all. He mocked it up, didn't do a bad job. It worked out pretty good. The bad thing about it is I have a bunch of uh, different types of bits for, you know, riding, bearing on this shit, so it works out pretty good. Um, they also give you, I think it was this kit here that gives you pieces of flame maple and you can bring up the bridge or bring up the template a little bit more in case you don't have a very good uh, bearing bit to ride the template. So I've got those as well. I'm not really too concerned because I got a bunch of different bits for doing this shit. And one of the bits that I've got is this real short, small bearing bit, real thin, and I use it for fine adjustments around edges. That'll work perfect for this. All right, so this is the next one that is going on the chopping block. You know, it looks like it's in rough shape now, but it will look real nice when I'm done with it. This is gonna get the Eddie Van Halen striping. And what I'm gonna do with it is strip the body, fix whatever damage is on the body as far as dents, chips, and shit like that goes. Hit it with some primer, spray sand that down, wet sand that down, then hit it with white. Why white? Because the body is going to be mostly red, because that makes it a lot easier to stripe. If I spray the body white, 
lay down my striping, spray down the red, peel up the white, or I can leave the white there and do my next step as far as the black goes. Peel up all my uh, paint tape and get into clear coating. Makes it real simple. Keeps you from doing more work than you really have to. All right, you guys, take it easy. Have a good one. I don't know what next video I'll be posting up. Uh, you know, it's Christmas time, so this is the time of the month where everyone's running around without a head, trying to figure out what they're going to get for their friends, family, and kids, and everything else. Uh, you know, for Christmas, and my stuff is done, but my family's stuff is not. So I have to help them with ordering stuff. So we'll see how this is all going to work out. You guys, take it easy. Have a good one, and I will catch up with y'all later.